Hey everybody, this is Dr. Eric Schumick. I wanna to talk to you today about three metabolism killers that are probably in your diet and you might even think are good for you. These might surprise you today. And the reason metabolism is so important is because it keeps you lean, uh, keeps you burning fat, and keeps your energy up where it needs to go. So one of the biggest complaints I get from people on a daily basis as a doctor is that they're tired and they don't feel good and they just feel sluggish. So these three foods may be to blame. So let's go ahead and get right into it. The first one is one that may be in your fridge right now that you may be given to your kids or the rest of your family, and that is going to be fruit juice. And this is surprising for a lot of people because fruit juice, we think, man, if I have orange juice, that's gonna get me a lot of vitamin C, right? Well, the problem is it's also getting you a lot of sugar. So fruit juices are very high in sugar, whether it's orange juice, apple juice, any other type of juice, they're actually higher in sugar a lot of times than a Pepsi or a Coke or any other type of soft drink. So when you take an orange and, and you squeeze five or six oranges into the glass, you're getting all of the sugar and you're not getting any of the pulp or the fiber that your body would need to break down that sugar and not have a huge blood sugar spike. So this is something that is a, is a big no-no for us in our family. Uh, my kids don't eat or drink uh, orange juice with breakfast because they know it's just a ton of sugar. And if they wanted to make that choice to drink orange juice, I would say, well, that would be your sugar for the day. Do you want to spend it on orange juice? And they, they're going to say no. So instead of doing fruit juice, um, a really good alternative is going to be just doing lemonade. So what we do instead is we make lemonade. So we'll either squeeze lemons or you can buy the organic just lemon juice in the store and you put that in, uh, in a pitcher with water and then you add stevia or xylitol to make it sweet and there you have um, something sweet that's actually good for you. So you gotta stay away from the fruit juice if you wanna keep that metabolism up where it's supposed to go because when you do the fruit juice, um, sugar goes through the roof and the sugar goes through the roof, your blood sugar goes up as well and then you're gonna have a blood sugar crash and that's gonna wreck your metabolism. So stay away from the fruit juice. The next one, and this is one that was really, people thought of as a health food for a long time. This is agave nectar. So every time I do a workshop on nutrition, anywhere I go, whether I'm in a, at a lunch and learn in somebody's office or I'm, I'm speaking in their home, they ask me about agave nectar when we start talking about sugar. And the, the problem with agave nectar is it's touted as a health food, but it's actually almost worse for you than high fructose corn syrup. And everybody knows high fructose corn syrup isn't good for you. Well, agave nectar is the same thing. It's, uh, it's processed at high temperatures. Um, it has no uh, positive effects and it has a huge blood sugar effect. It actually gets into the cells even faster than regular sugar, which is why high fructose corn syrup is such a problem. Well, agave nectar is the same thing. So agave nectar is not, um, not something you should have in your, in your pantry and it's surely not something you should have in your pantry thinking that it's healthy. So you wanna stay away from the agave nectar because it does the same thing. It raises your blood sugar levels when the blood sugar and insulin levels go up, they're eventually what goes up must come down and they start to crash. So what happens with the metabolism is your blood sugar keeps going up and down and up and down and up and down. Your hormones get completely um, miswired and then you start, your, your metabolism starts to go down and down and down and down. So your set point of your metabolism goes lower and lower and lower trying to deal with all these blood sugar spikes. And that's why agave nectar is one that you would absolutely want to avoid. So what kind of sweeteners can you use instead? Well, a lot of people ask me about honey, and the problem with a lot of processed honey, like in, in granola and other things like that, is it's also processed at high temperature and is just almost as bad as agave nectar. So honey is gonna be better than regular sugar, but there's two choices that are gonna be always a lot better for you, and uh, those would be stevia and xylitol. If you've never heard of stevia, it's made from the stevia plant, and there's a lot of places now that they have little packets, that it's a green packet, and it's completely natural. It's not artificial in any way. It's just um, they grind up the root or the leaf of the stevia plant, and it's actually sweeter than sugar. So you can sweeten your tea or your coffee or something with that instead. The other would be xylitol, and xylitol is a is a natural sugar alcohol. It doesn't have any blood sugar effects at all. So it doesn't cause that insulin spike and it doesn't cause your metabolism to crash. They can actually increase your metabolism. So stay away from the agave nectar, get that out of your house if you have it in there already. And the last one is probably the biggest uh, misunderstanding that I, that I get when I do speaking in the community or I'll do a webinar. People always ask about grains. So the, the one you really wanna avoid here would be whole grains. And you might look at that and think, why would I avoid whole grains? I thought that was good for me. 
Well, whole grain doesn't mean anything. It's just an advertising slogan. So it doesn't mean that it's healthy for you at all. As a matter of fact, it's, it's usually not healthy for you because it's like whole grain bread or whole grain crackers or whatever. And you get the, the picture of somebody, you know, going out and picking the wheat and grinding it on a stone and making it in, a, in an oven, you know, a brick oven. But that's not the way this happens. These things are highly, highly processed most of the time. And the issue with most grain is we eat far too much of it in our country. And the, what I always say to our patients is if you want to make a, an animal fat, what do you feed it? You don't feed it grass, you feed it grain. You feed it corn and other grain. Well, if you want to make a human fat, what do you feed it? You feed it grain because it does the same thing as fruit juice and agave nectar. It drives up your insulin levels, which is a fat storage hormone, and then your metabolism starts to go down. So that's what whole grains do for you. The other thing that's in whole grains that you really want to avoid are these things, this, this stuff called phytic acid or phytons. And phytic acid is a anti-nutrient basically, and it binds lots of uh, minerals like zinc and, and phosphorus and potassium, and it makes sure your body can absorb them. It also binds enzymes, so it breaks down the body's enzymes that you would use to digest the whole grains, like whole grain bread or whole grain crackers or whole grain cereal, like Special K or something. And it's actually, so not only are you getting the high blood sugar effect, you're also decreasing your ability to absorb it. So a lot of people develop autoimmune disorders, inflammatory conditions, eczema from eating the whole grains. So a better choice rather than just something that says whole grain would be sprouted grain. So if you're going to do bread, sprouted grain bread would be the best way to go because sprouting decreases that phytic acid. It also decreases the blood sugar effect on your body. So if you're going to do bread, that would be a better choice. So Ezekiel bread, Rudy makes a sprouted grain bread. There's several other ones. A lot of these you have to get at the health food store. But if my family's going to do bread, we will do sprouted grain. If you're going to do a hamburger and you want to use bread, you can do a sprouted grain bun, which would be much for, better for you than just the whole grain Sara Lee bread that's sitting there in the uh, grocery store for you. So if you want to lose weight or if you want to have more energy or you want to be lean as you get older, you want to make sure you're, you're avoiding these three metabolism killers and make sure the next time you see somebody eating those, when you tell them about this, the people at work, the people around you, tell them what you know because what we've been deceived by is really good advertising in our country and unfortunately you see what happens. We're the sickest industrialized country in the world right now. We have more heart disease, cancer, or diabetes than any other country in the history of the world and the solution to that obviously is knowledge. So make sure you share what you know.